Oh my gosh! Hello everybody, it's Barry here. Hope you are well wherever you are in the world. Welcome to the kitchen and today we're doing this. Uh, I don't know if you know what they are, uh, you might be from a part of the world that's like, what is a wagon wheel? Is that a wheel on a cart that is pulled by a horse? No! It's a chocolatey marshmallowy biscuit snack which is popular in the UK. Four pound! Uh, I saw this the other day, we were in the shop, we went in for like, I can't remember what it was, like, napkins? But anyhow, this is completely legit, I have not opened, look, the tin is still sealed because today, remember we did a series of videos, since we around like the Christmas time where they make a super-sized version of a thing, and I can already tell, because it says epic inside, it looks like a massive wagon wheel, but, oh, look, it's just a tin full of wagon wheels, and of course, to me, as I walk past, that's disappointing, you're like, epic inside, is it a massive wagon wheel that reflects in the light like that? So some of you don't know what a wagon, wow, these got small, Wow. So you probably don't know what this is, so let's open one up to tell you what it is, and by the end of this video, my aim is to make a giant wagon wheel in this tin. This could melt in the oven. A giant wagon wheel from a giant wagon wheel. What you've got uh, is a chocolate base, a biscuit, marshmallow lined biscuit, and then more chocolate. That is it. I do know some of you are gonna be like, oh my gosh, you should have done like the jam one. I'm not gonna do that. It's red, the plain ones are the plain. We, do, we could just, just stick jam in, you do it yourself. I might actually end up melting this tin. Let me worry about that, then you can be the jammy ones. In every sense. So I was talking to Mrs. Barry about it earlier. Oh my gosh, okay. I was saying, ah, can I bake this? I don't really feel safe doing this. It feels very flimsy. She's like, just do it. It kind of worries me, because I feel like this shouldn't be put in the oven, so we're going to wrap it fully in foil, but if I bake the biscuit in here, sometimes foil can be a little bit meh with a biscuit. I'm going to put baking parchment on it as well. <laughs> Lovely job like that. We'll wrap it in foil first as well, and this really needs to come off. I mean, to be fair, it should work. I wrapped cardboard in foil before and stuck it in the oven. And now this can sit in there and give us a slightly more non-slippy sticky uh, base for the biscuit, which we make now, the first one, uh, to sit on. Hmm. So here is some plain flour. I'm gonna add in a little bit of salt and some baking powder. So hopefully to give it a little bit of rice. I would say these are all the dry ingredients, but they're not, because we've got some sugar, but that's gonna get creamed in a minute with our butter. Don't just be like, oh yeah, that's done now. It's meant to really pump it. Get it creamy. Mm. A few minutes, all right? Wow, I've made quite the mess there. Hey, it's amazing where sugar goes. Vanilla extract. Speaking of egg extract, that's one large egg. And once we whiz this together, along with the flour, that's everything we need. Well, for the biscuit. All right, lovely jubbly. So here comes, am I going to get it in the bowl? Yes, I am, just about. <laughs> the flour mix, all right? Ah, oh, I mean, I was going to sieve it. I don't think it matters. We're not making a cake, we're making a stodgy biscuit. See how it's starting to look like quite like rough and rocky and pebbly? If I pinch that together with my hands, that'll be more like a dough, and that's really what I'm after. I'm hoping this is going to be enough for two. All right, and let's test that theory if I just go like that. Oh yeah. That is Biscuit Town, baby. Welcome to Biscuit Town. Population, hopefully two biscuits. I divide it in two, like a fortune cookie. <laughs> all right, okay. Ah, you know what? After all that, it's quite thin. So, we're gonna shove the lot in there. And I'm gonna, off camera, make another batch of this up. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm talking about. We want some slab. Oh, yes. Oh, that's good. I'm very happy with this. Normally, when I'm making biscuits like this, I would chill it in the fridge to help hold its shape before baking it, but there's not really, oh, oven's preheated. There's not really very much it can go. It's only gonna go up. <laughs> there is only one way to find out. If this ends up being way too big, I'll have to make two smaller batches. Let's get it in the oven and hope it doesn't melt. Oh my gosh, please work. See you in a bit, okay? I've got, I'm not gonna do anything, I'm gonna wait and see what you do. 
I've got this fear of like going back to that in a minute and being like, uh, <laughs> just all melted mass. So I can't really do much more right now. If that is a nice size once it's baked, amazing. If not, I'm gonna make another batch anyway. If that does work, I'll just divide that by two and get that thinner layer uh, that we can wedge together. Fun. Right, so far so good folks. I've made my other bit of dough and uh, this has had nearly 15 minutes. And I'll typically give this about 10 uh, if it was a normal size one. I can see it's still a little wet on the top, but it will firm up as it cools. But I'm not gonna risk it, I wanna bake it a little longer. To be fair, as keen as I am to make this wagon wheel, um, I really care more about not melting tin and metal to my oven tray, so I'm just so glad uh, that has worked, because that could have been extremely uh, messy. Foil was amazing, aluminium foil, or is it in America? It's spelled the same, obviously, aluminum. You just have arguments on the summer camp in America about that. Aluminium. Are you crazy? Speak English, Barry. Aluminum. Aluminium. <laughs> You're so funny. Oh, nice. A little bit of a light golden colour on there. Absolutely perfect. That took half an hour. So I'm going to leave it on this wire rack, slightly raised. Might put it in my garage. In fact, I will put it in my garage to cool down so it can set. And we do that all over again. But yeah, that is about halfway up the tin. It's firm, so with another biscuit in there and the marshmallow layer, that should look really, really good. I've actually come up with quite a fun way to do the marshmallow, which we'll come on to. But I'm gonna let cool in the garage. 2,000 years later. All right, it's been 15 minutes. Oh, you beautiful thing. I'm actually gonna set the biscuit this way up, because this is gonna be our bottom. And this time, uh, I'm gonna push the dough in with my hands. I'm not gonna roll it. Just wanna make sure that I don't catch any of that foil into the biscuit. That's the worst thing ever. Especially if you've got a fill in, folks. But it does need half an hour. Take two. I know that you work now. That's good. All right, so I'm planning on this one being our bottom. So we are pouring some chocolate on here. Now this uh, is not uh, full dark chocolate. It's not milk. So dark chocolate is normally about 70% cocoa solids. This one was about 50%. So I just wanna make sure the bottom of the biscuit is covered. We're gonna do one big poury drench with loads more chocolate later. But we don't wanna forget our bottom. I'm not sure if you can hear that. So I was gonna go for a run in between whilst we wait for the major set of the chocolate. The heavens have just opened up. All right, there we go, look at that. <laughs> so that can set uh, in my garage now again. The garage is basically my big fridge. Uh, I was gonna be making homemade marshmallows whilst that one was cooking. Uh, it is a little bit dangerous, quite fun to make. I did a video on the channel a while ago. I've made them a few times uh, sporadically uh, on the channel. Uh, gelatin, liquid glucose, a bit of sugar, egg whites, that sort of thing. But we can make it way easier. We've got a hot oven, we've got a perfect mold. Feed the birds, tuppence a bag, Mary Poppins style. Marshmallow Town. Oh, I've got a nice layer of mini marshmallows, which is great. So hopefully they'll all mingle together. Now I have no idea. I feel like this should be my cat's rage. I have no idea if this is gonna work. But what I do know is if I have it in the oven, that flame could char the marshmallows too much. But we've got a lid, haven't we? I mean, I'll wrap it in foil and it will just scale like that and it will protect it and hopefully warm that marshmallow into one lake. Are you with me? Are you still here? <laughs> that looks amazing. That's some sort of like space frisbee. So remember how that looked, okay? Lid on. I'm not even gonna push it down. Oh, I could. There's no, there's no need. We're just covering it so it can become like a warm marshmallow melting hub. This isn't a sponsored video, by the way, but if Wagon Wheel do want to get in touch and make a massive one that we give to charity in like a food shower or something like that, that'd be amazing, wouldn't it? Anyhow, look at that. We've turned that tin into a NASA style. That's actually, we've upgraded. That looks like I would pay good money for that. All right, I don't know how long, maybe a few minutes. 82 kilometers later. Right, see, here's the thing. It's been about 15 minutes. I did a little bit with the lid off and there we go. It looks like nothing's happened. But if I rough up this surface, which I don't want to do too much, you notice that it kind of has become sticky. That is ready to stick to the bottom. It's going to be a bit of a struggle for me to get the foil out of there. So 
We'll shove our bottom directly on top of this clammy, sticky marshmallowness right now. Marshmallowness. What a word. Hmm. Go in. Ah. Ah. Let's just go for it. Push it down and in. Okay. Yeah. We're going. We're in. That's fine. We will let it chill and cool fully whilst that marshmallow bonds to this. Once it cools, we should be able to get the foil out from underneath to remove a little bit of the thickness on the sides, then we drench. Confidence. All right, folks, so this is now uh, at a room temperature and I wanna try and get this out of the tin. I'm hoping gravity will help us. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. That is outstanding. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Another massive layer of the chocolate. It might get a fair bit of runoff here. And just let it drench and coat that whole thing. Remember our bottom is done. There it is. All my sides are covered. Kind of wish I used my chocolate tempering machine. I don't know, why do I have one of those? It's the sort of thing that I have in my garage. Most people have like drills. And, I mean, I have a drill, but like I also have a tempering machine. All right, folks, uh, the bottom was only just set. So this, despite the chocolate being room temperature, I've melted it and let it stand for 10 minutes. It's gonna take a good couple of hours. I've still got to edit a video. I've got to put my donut video, which you've hopefully seen, because that was the video before this one. If you haven't, check it out, so good. Uh, and I'm also, believe it or not, I try and go for a run now at lunchtime just to get some fresh air. Uh, I'm gonna try and run four miles. So that means I can have this, that's, that's fair, right? Four miles and I can have a bite. That's about the same amount of calories, yeah. See you in a bit. One nap later. Well, here we are then, folks. Uh, two hours later. I didn't go for my run. Still in my shorts. So I probably will after this. <laughs> Too much info? Probably yes. But here it is in all its glory, all nice and set with a standard one for scale. <laughs> I've tried putting it back into the tin and it just... I don't know. I could probably bend the tin. But have we made a giant wagon wheel from a giant wagon wheel? Yes, we blooming well have, and I can't wait to slice this open, which is now. So as I get uh, the one that I sliced open from hours ago, I had the other half for lunch, actually. We can slice down into this. Oh, oh my gosh. Well, it's gone through nicely. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, you've got this lovely fusion of the marshmallow in between. That has worked so good. I love doing these videos. Ah! Oh. I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news as well. This tin was four pounds and the ingredients to make this. Oh was less than that, it was actually £2.75, and that includes buying the marshmallows. Mmm! <laughs> that is delightful! You've got that perfect chewiness of the marshmallow, the softness of the biscuit, it's a little bit of crunch there. I kind of find that with a wagon wheel, you get them, there's a crunch, but it's still a tenderness, especially with two biscuits. And I think we've kind of nailed the chocolate coating. It's chocolate, it's a coating, it's holding it all together like a sandwich. Even our base, okay, it's a little bit patchy. That's fine, never look at the bottom. Oh, they do it the same as well, actually. <laughs> but that has worked so well. Oh my gosh. Mm. And that wedge <laughs> is more than enough. In fact, even like half a wedge. <laughs> but for a birthday or something crazy like that, blooming awesome. Well, there we go. Like I said earlier in the video, don't forget to check out the other ones that I've done, making a giant uh out of a giant uh, 
when the giant uh, has little uhs inside, which is the biggest tease ever. Um, so this might be an accidental playlist. I'll shove it on the giant food one for now, but um, absolutely loving it. And this has turned out so good. Um, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like. Tell your friends about it, and I'll see you later. Yeah. After eating that, I am definitely going to go for a very quick run. See you later. I'm a romantic rapper, baby. Ain't science and a label, but I'm spreading out these lyrics like topping on a bagel. Cooking is a shizzle, so don't you get stressed. Just get a hot pan and some chicken breast. Ooh, there's a little bit of buttercream right there.